What has a moth, a lamp, and a wire armature of a man? Today we're making the West Virginian cryptid Mothman. We'll start with his bones, bending them into the right position before covering them with some meat to fill out his frame. Mothman's eyes will glow in the dark, so we'll cut into the clay to run the wiring that I definitely did not almost forget. I'll be using heat safe wire so that I don't fill my apartment with nasty melting plastic fumes. With his insides pre-baked, I can get started on his legs, marking out the hips and then adding lumps that sort of align with human musculature. After my last sculpture, I purchased a sculpting book and an anatomy book in hopes to learn from both. This is where I learned about the fabulous world of loop tools, which I think are the bee's knees. The moth knees? Some kind of knees. I'll use a couple homemade loop tools to carve out the leg shape and smooth the skin before poking all kinds of tryptophobia inducing holes all over the place. Mothman lore says that he may have been a man fused with a moth, or an alien, or perhaps even a barn owl. I tried to implement each of these into the sculpture with varying degrees of success. Once his legs are finished, I'll give the piece a quick bake to save my progress from my clumsy hands, and then I'll get started on his torso. Leaning into that humanoid alien aspect, I decided to try making something very skinny and weirdly muscular, partly because I was excited about trying to make a human back. All of his back will be covered up by his wings soon enough, but even though you can't see it in the final product, you'll know it's there. On his front, I'll mark out where his abs and ribs go, forgetting everything that I just learned in my sculpting anatomy book. That being said, Mothman is a cryptid, so traditional anatomy kind of flies out the window. I'll use my loop tools to slowly excavate the definition, and then use a silicone shaper to smooth it all out. Finally, I'll poke three larger holes in his chest and collarbone area. Why? I don't know why. I just thought, hey, this might look neato, and then went for it. Actually, the last thing I'll do is I'll give Mothman a little moth belly button. Mothman's arms will start out much the same as his legs, but I'll stray less far from the humanoid aspects this time. I had a bit of trouble with the proportions, giving him crazy bulging bodybuilder biceps and triceps to start, but I was able to cut back through trial and error until his arms were about the size that I wanted them to be. It looked a bit too human still, so I poked a few holes here and there to stay on theme for the video. I'll then add a few veins with some liquid clay, and then he's into the oven so I can start on his head. Using my shoddy soldering skills, I'll attach two red LEDs to his neck wires, and then I can fire cure two translucent clay eyeballs that will diffuse the light. Then with a quick smack, I'll surround his eyes in clay. The shape I'm going for is a cross between an owl head and a moth head. I played with the idea of giving him a mouth, but then I thought it looked a little bit weird and silly, so I decided to pretend that this never happened and just enlarge his nose bits. His whole head will get painstakingly texturified with my tiniest ball stylus, and then as soon as his head is done, I can make his antenna. These will be made with cosplay. I've never used that before, but the internet tells me that it's flexible when baked and is less prone to cracking, so for something delicate like these, I'll give it a try. I was actually really happy with the result, and since I put some wire inside the main strand, I could change the shape whenever I wanted. I made Mothman with human hands at first, but then I decided to make bug-style hands and owl talon feet instead. This was mostly because hands are hard, but partly because I think that non-human hands and feet looked spookier. Finally, I'll make Mothman's wings. My original idea was to have it look like he had a second set of arms that had sort of fused with his wings in a grotesque hybrid, but, well, this didn't exactly work out as planned. My first mistake was trying to cure only one side of the wing with my heat gun so that I could texture the other side, but I accidentally cured the entire thing. And remember how I said that cosplay is flexible when baked? Well, there are limits to that flexibility. And I found those limits. Bummed out at wasted time, but still needing wings, I decided to make them out of some spare packaging foam that I had lying around. This was actually a happy accident, because not only was the foam easier to paint, but it was also lighter weight, making it easier to mount Mothman in the end. I'll cover the wings in some Mod Podge, and then prime them black so that I can get started on the painting. 
Using a couple different moths as reference, I did my best to make them look as wing-like as possible. Now I know that most of the legends about Mothman say that he has bat wings, but I really wanted to lean into the moth aspect of Mothman and make him have full-on moth wings, including all of the colors and designs. Now, I've never made moth wings before, but I gotta say I was pretty pleased with how it was coming out. Once I snap the paint onto the other three wings and the backs, I can get started on the main event. I don't have a solid plan for Mothman's colors, but I know I want to be pretty muted and not let it take over. So I decided to accomplish this with a few layers of dry brushing, mostly in gunmetal gray, brown tin, and purple. His nose bit, fingers, and toes will get a brassy color, and then his antenna will get painted orange. At this point he was a bit too shimmery and metallic, so I doled it down with a black wash. With Mothman done, now we can get him a lamp to perch on. First I'll take a flickering tea light and break it apart to steal its LED heart. I want to have the wires traveling hidden through a metal pipe, so I got a pipe bender online so that I could get the exact shape that I wanted. After eventually figuring out how to use the pipe bender correctly, with lots of help from the internet, I got the shape I wanted and then was able to start drilling a hole for the wire to go through. And this is where everything started to go wrong. The first mistake I made was using a Dremel with a rock grinder attachment to try and cut metal. It took nearly two hours of dedication before I realized that I had the wrong size pipe. My wires wouldn't fit through. Back again with the wrong tool and the right pipe, I spent double the time grinding away at the new pipe before finally giving up and deciding to use some random clippers to chip away at the metal until it finally snapped. Or I snapped. Either way, for scale, here's the before and after size of my Dremel bit. A few more minutes of grinding and then I can finally feel the sweet, sweet success of pulling my wires through the pipe. I'll then use an amalgamation of wire, clay, and UV resin to attach the pipes together in the exact right spots. The astute among you will notice that no, these pipes are not bent. This is because my special pipe bender was too small. But you know, I honestly feel like it turned out better this way. I'm failing forward. I hope. Another demonstration of my terrible soldering, and we have light! I'll use a slice of baked translucent clay to diffuse the light and give it that old dirty street lamp vibe that I'm looking for. I just got a new toothbrush, and the packaging is the exact shape I need for the lamp, so I'll sand the smooth plastic so that the paint adheres better, and then I'll attach it to the pipe and the light. I'll add some bits of aluminum foil to hopefully reflect more light. I don't know if it worked, but I did it, and it's done. I'll hot glue the translucent clay into place, and then get started on the base. I'll smack some clay and then use a piece of foam to trace out the right shape. To get the right old concrete texture that I want, I'll make some music with marimba ball styluses, and then I'll delicately apply texture with a rock until it looks... natural. I'll glue my primed clay to the foam, and then glue the lamp post to the clay. I made a lamp post base, but forgot to click record, so here it is as a surprise. Then I can paint my lamp post silver. For whatever reason, I primed my silver pipes black only to repaint them silver. I have no idea why I created all this extra work for myself, but hey, at least it ended up silver. I'll paint the base a stonewall gray, then add a brown wash to dirty it up and make it look a little older. I meant to remember to add some dry brushing on top of this since dry brushing is awesome and I need more practice, but I didn't do that so you'll have to pretend. I'll add a black wash to weather the lamp post itself and then I'll add streaks of rust wherever it feels appropriate. Adding the rust might have been my favorite part of the whole project. I couldn't tell you why, but it just felt delightful. I'll finish up the base by adding a few spots of dry grass and a sprinkling of leaves. 
I'll then use too much watered down PVA glue to affix them to the floor, and then soak up the extra glue with a paper towel and some Q-tips. But with that, this project is finished and we can dim the lights and take a look at Mothman. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I plan to make more cryptids in the future, so if there's one you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. But until next time.